No Limit Texas Hold'em is the Cadillac of poker. You don't happen to have 8,000 bucks on you. Oh, no, no, we don't use money in heaven. It comes in pretty handy down here, bub. Oh, you just want a million dollars! You're making a run at it, aren't you? Rolling up a stake and going to Vegas. What's up, everyone? It's been a long time since I've uploaded any story form content. A few of you have been following along Instagram and are a little bit more caught up, but as for the rest of the world, let's give an update about where I've been and where I am now. Okay, so last update on this channel anyway was that I was back and I had gone on a small heater in NHL betting and in poker. I ended up winning about $3,000 in the past two days and uh, like about 5600 overall in the past week and three days. And then nothing after that, right? Okay, so what happened was Poker didn't go very well from then on. Oh, there's a big surprise! Super Bowl weekend was shortly after that, and typically one of the best weekends of the year to play on the strip. And I just got crushed. I lost like $1,500, which is not a ton of money, but it's a, kind of a lot of, it's five buy-ins in one, two, and one, three, and not really fun. Honestly, that $1,500 loss took a lot more wind on my sails than it really should have. And so I just started to... Progressively play less and less. I was sort of relying on NHL to pay the bills. My expenses had also gone up at this point as well, and I was spending a lot more than I really should have. Just, just stupid. being careless with my money, going out to eat, sweating games with some of my friends and other poker peers who had gotten more heavily into sports betting. And I just didn't really have any goals or drive to, to go and play. I'd kind of forgotten what a real grind that poker is. JK, my Kanish here in Vegas, finally confronted me about it one day. Uh, I just really kind of really forgot what a real grind that for poker for is. Why I hadn't been putting out. in a lot of volume. And other than JK, my I had a Kanish here in Vegas in as well, well and which had we'll, dropped like a rock. Uh, yeah. So that brings me to receiving a phone call one day from a recruiter for Lockheed Martin looking for electronic technicians um, working with their engineering lab in Orlando, Florida. So I just really kind of forgot Even when not looking for a job, my email and that phone poker is day going in, off day out from different right? jobs and recruiters and JK across the country. Mike, here in uh, Vegas aviation finally in confronted me about it one day. And I really didn't really have really big a good answer for him. And it's a really healthy other than industry. Why I had, so why I most of them I ignore because other than pay, I had a decent crazy hours and as well. But this one was different and Lockheed is the number one brings me to receiving a contractor. So I was interested and here in, here in the mountain learn more about this opportunity so fast forward to a few weeks from then on to having a phone interview with the managers of the department including the the three year stint of playing pro pro poker professionally on my resume well, that's not going to work out which they were intrigued to learn more about and they hired me so moved back to orlando florida i originally came to vegas from florida so and there's a few reasons for as far as like taking that job other than it being a good paying job with steady income. So I had a lot of old friends in the area, so I was able to reconnect with some of them and go on a lot of adventures on the weekend. Get around. I love getting around. My best friend was going through some pretty tough times, so it was nice to be able to be there physically to support him and his family. And I was also closer to my parents in South Carolina, which is about an eight hour drive or also known as forty dollars in the Prius and I was able to make mostly make my own hours and kind of work the schedule that I wanted to so I was able to get four and five day weekends and take trip weekend trips up to up to see them and so just spending more time with them uh, was really great so I contracted for a year with them and then extended that out for another six months and then just because of either something with Lockheed policy or Florida employment law I'm not sure what it is but if you've extended your contract already and you want to remain a contract as opposed to going direct hire, there's pros and cons to both, you're required to take three months off before uh, returning as a contractor. Um, contractors get paid more directly, but you know, direct hires get you know, better benefits and you know, higher matching 401ks, etc. Pay time off, things like that, right? Working with Lockheed was an absolutely incredible opportunity and one I do not regret in the slightest. Hands down the best company I've ever worked for, just from my first day to my last day. Incredible experience. I learned a ton. A lot of really, really smart people. I got to work on some of the most advanced stuff on the planet. Support a lot of really awesome projects that nobody's ever going to get to see. You know, if that job was so amazing, well, why don't you just stay? Why leave now? <laughs> well, there's a few reasons. One of the main reasons is because that it was in Florida. 
and I know I just laid out some reasons for why Florida was good for me, but doesn't make any sense. Let me finish and I'll, I'll bring it back around. Sure, I'll take sunshine and humidity any day over sub-zero wind chill and snow, but still, it rains every single day in the summer, uh, like clockwork. Uh, traffic is progressively getting worse and worse as more people move there and retire there. Not really the best state to ride motorcycles in, aside from decent weather. I didn't know you rode bikes. And some of my old friends had just kind of taken another path in life, and we weren't really as close as we used to be. So my community there, while pretty tight-knit, was also fairly small. And while poker in Florida is really good, it's really good in specific areas, particularly like Tampa and South Florida are really good. Jacksonville's not bad either. And Orlando has one decent-sized room, and it's it's just that. It's it's decent, you know. Mostly one two, some two five. Nothing really higher runs above that, and even that is about forty-five minutes or so outside of actual Orlando. What have I been doing and playing on uh, as far as poker wise while working this job? I've still been playing on the side, mid stakes cash online, and then you know forty to hundred dollar tournaments online. Nothing really crazy. Not a lot of live play just because of time constraints of working you know, 40 to 60 hour weeks and going up to see family and uh, things like that. Didn't really prioritize poker. Still, I've been keeping up with uh, everything in the poker industry, however, still listening to about a podcast. I'm just constantly seeing Texas pop up again and again and again on my feed and watching recreational guys on YouTube flat King 2 from the small blind and just be crushing the game. And so I think to myself, like, what am I doing with my life? And which is probably what a lot of you have been thinking as well. Exactly. So I started playing out my move to Texas, talking with different pros who lived here and evaluating between the different areas like Dallas, Austin, Houston, San Antonio. I landed on Dallas eventually after talking with them. And uh, I also do have some family here, which is really nice as well. So I decided that Dallas would be uh, where, I pr pr where I primarily live and grind full time. Still going to make trips down to Austin and San Antonio. I have friends down there as well. But Dallas will be the, the main. So I also eventually decided to get rid of the Prius and build out a van, as you can kind of see behind me. I'll show that in another video. While you do lose some of the stealth factor while urban camping and drop miles per gallon from 50 to like 18 to 20 in this, uh, you do just get so much more space and storage and power solutions. I have an Xbox and a 4K monitor. I have a fridge. I have a microwave. I have a toilet. Like just a lot of nice stuff that you're just not going to have in the Prius. It's the, tr the Prius is by far like the best vehicle as far as like minimalist traveling. The van is just so much nicer in all the other areas, right? So I've pretty much just taken the opposite path of my buddy Carlos Welch. He was in a van playing poker and moved into a Prius. And I was in a Prius playing poker and moved into a van. We're just, we're just bad regs passing in the night. So after January 1st, I packed up everything I had into the van and then also the rest of this, my stuff into an enclosed trailer, including the motorcycle that I broke a world record on. You did what? More on that at a later date. I'm not the bike king because all I do is drive cars. I recognize. Short recap to that is the external hard drive, the video files were on crashed and it's about $3,000 to recover that. And so, I was able to at least get it witnessed and verified. But yes, without the whole video being uh, that I can point people to, that's one of the reasons for not really promoting this uh, yet. Been riding for about 15 years now. I didn't even have a car until I was in college. I've just always rode bikes and it's not something that I really enjoy. I have a 1999 Honda CBR 1100, which is one of the best bike motorcycles ever made, in my opinion. The fastest bike in the world before the Hayabusa came out. And it's just a really incredible machine uh, related to the aviation industry. And I just love it for a lot of reasons. I'll get into more into motorcycles in another video. And some of you could care less about motorcycles. And so now I'm here in Dallas. And I have a comfortable role to grind with. How much you got? I'm back where I started. With three stacks of high society. Uh, continue to handicap the H NHL, which continues to go well this season, and getting back into content creation to, again, not with just the vlog, but across all socials Instagram, TikTok, OnlyFans, 
Okay, well, not 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 that. I'm also podcasting. Started a new podcast. Of me and my best friend and WP champion Joe Tihan. It's titled "When the Chips Are Down." It should be available uh, wherever you get your podcast on Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Should be on across all platforms, and you can find a link to that below. Okay. So let's wrap it up with some goals. I had mentioned that one of the main reasons that I failed in my short um, back stint in Vegas was because I lacked any clear vision or drive to achieve anything. And I didn't. Yeah. When goal setting, I like to use a three-tier system, meaning my middle goal will be my main one that I'm shooting for. However, if things just go very poorly and you just run like way below EV or there's other factors that hinder it, and it's clear that you're just not going to achieve that that goal in the time frame that you set. It can be kind of discouraging, right? That you, there's just no way that I'm gonna achieve what I originally set out for. So my main goal will be the one I'm shooting for. That'll be the middle tier. Lower tier will be if things just go really poorly. Uh, I still think that this is achievable. And then I'll also have a higher tier goal as well. Things just go amazing. And I reach my main goal way faster than I thought it was possible. I still wanna be able to push myself and strive for to always get better, right? But for me, I find goal setting useful, and if I write something down or say something, then it holds me a little bit more accountable to go out and do that thing. I can have all the best ideas right up in my head, but if I don't put them down on paper or actually write out what I'm gonna do, it, I very rarely follow through on what I actually have going on. Okay, so goal number one, profit. I'd like to profit 50K in poker this year, I originally honestly wanted this to be 100K. I also need to be realistic about this as well, okay? I haven't played 2,000 hours in a year before. I'm in a new area with a wide variety of games and stakes. Everything plays really big here. So I just, and I don't really know a lot of people here in the community yet. So there's a lot of new stuff that I'm just gonna have to kind of figure out and, and adjust to on my own. I'm gonna grind like hell and really put in the volume that I need and we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll, you know, one of my original, first things that I really want to get done is just, is just to play 500 hours and just see where I'm at at 500 hours and see, okay, 500 hours, how's, what's this, that's, that's an okay sample size live and, you know, all right, where's your hourly? How, how are things going? Do you think this is something that's possible or should you maybe look at something else? So we'll see. You know, my upper tier is still going to be 100k and I'm going to really try and get to that. But we'll we'll see. I mean, even 50k, it'd be a solid first year back. That'd be pretty much double my role for my lower tier. Uh, we'll say 25k. If I if things just go really really poorly and I I just get crushed in every game I try and shot taken and 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 it all goes poorly, 25k is still is still making money and still cover more than covering all the bills. Obviously not what we're shooting for, but I mean. There's a lot of variance in poker, and especially live, there's it takes a long time. You gotta grind a lot in order to actually get a good sample size. And I'll probably go over finances more in depth in another video, but no, this role that I'm, I'm playing with is not my entire net worth, okay? I have other, both liquid and non-liquid assets. I have a Roth IRA I contribute to every month. So I'm not putting it all at risk, all on the table. Uh, especially when I can always go back to Lockheed Martin, probably here in Dallas, this is one of their main headquarters, and play on the side if things go really terribly. It's not, you know, you know, I don't, I don't have everything in my in a backpack. And when the backpack's empty, I'm I'm done and have to go work at McDonald's or something. That's not what we're doing here. Goal number two is grow the channel and the following. Assuming that's something that I continue to enjoy and providing entertainment and value to others, I honestly have no idea where to set this bar and goal. As vloggers have really blown up in the past few years, and I've been as I've been out of pro pro poker pro professionally, but you see guys like Rampage, who have clearly shown that rapid growth is really possible if you just put in the effort and grind. Let's see if we can do that. I have a tremendous amount of respect for what Rampage has been able to accomplish and the following that he's been able to amass and the stake that he's he's been able to play. It's really inspiring. Uh, let's just say 25k subscribers on YouTube, and with 10k being the lower tier, I sh I should be able to get to 10k. Come on, come on, guys! Like, just just drop us up. It's free. And uh, let's say 100k for being like way insane. If things just go awesome, and uh, you know, I really blow up. Uh, maybe. Let's get there. Let's get a server play button. That'd be sweet. And, uh, goal number three. Uh, it's phys physical fitness. I know what you're saying. 
Andrew, how are you going to get in more peak physical con condition? But I'm a guy who likes to push boundaries, okay? Do you look like you body build? Yes. Doubt it. Do you even lift? I mean, sure. I'm a, I'm a, I'm in okay shape. My body fat is two percent. I know, shocker. Uh, I have a VO2 max of 49. My resting heart rate is 50. It's it's good. It's fine. But I've been in better shape before, and I really like to get in the best shape of my life this year. And so I've competed in some, in some distance events before, like some tr sprint, sprint triathlons. I've biked the Ironman distance of 112 miles before. So I think I think like an Amer an Olympic triathlon would be a good goal to, to to shoot for and set that for some time around in the summer ish, maybe. But we'll see how things go. And uh, if you have an idea for what you'd like to achieve, like maybe I haven't run a marathon, maybe run my first marathon, something like that. And uh, if you have a, an idea, let me know in the comments. So goal number four is the NHL, and I'd really like to continue to be profitable in that. So far, it has been up th just about 33 units on the season so far at the All-Star break, which is very solid. I'm still learning every day about this sport. There's so much that I don't know and things that I'm not accounting for that I should be and things that I'm probably paying a little bit too much attention to that don't need as much. There's a lot of variance and puck luck in hockey, but so far, so good. And it's something that I really enjoy and it's making me money. So I'm going to try and continue to do it. Let's say 50 units for the year. I'm at 30. I think being, get, getting to 50 would be very reasonable, not insane if we just continue on the same track that we have been going. So I think 50 units is certainly doable. And with the lower tier being 30, if I just break even for the rest of the year, I'd be fine with that. I'm, I'm a, uh, making 30 units in a season is quite good. Uh, and then uh, for our upper tier, let's say 70 units. If things just go really hot and we just go on a on a really hot run it's that's probably very unlikely but it's you know it could happen like probably a big question is what's my unit size well typical unit size for me is 100 bucks so that's what that is goal number five is kind of a big one i'd really like to play the main event this year uh highly unlikely i'll have the role to do that 100 percent on my own but then again hardly anyone plays the main 100 percent on their own so either through selling action or through satellites Hopefully we can get in there and play the best tournament in the world. That'd be really great. Okay, and then goal number six is motorcycle related. So me and one of my best friends in Florida are planning a pretty big cross country trip on our motorcycles in September. It would be about 7,000 miles over three weeks of riding from Florida to Portland, Oregon, down through California, and then back across the country. Haven't nailed down the route exactly just yet, but that's the general idea hitting up a lot of national parks and things like that. It's something that's been on both of our bucket lists for a while now. And if you plan it out accordingly, it doesn't have to be terribly expensive. And the very first person to cross the country with an internal combustion engine did so on a motorcycle. So how much more American can you get? So I'd also very likely have to buy another motorcycle for this specific trick, very likely a Goldwing. And as I said, it's 21 days, which is kind of a lot of time to not be playing poker. And so I need to be doing ver well in other areas before I can justify something for myself like that. But it's, so that's kind of like a reward that I'm shooting for if things go well and, you know, I haven't lost all my money. If things aren't going well, then I can't do it. Okay, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'm going to continue to come out with more videos on here tiktok instagram follow the podcast we'll be should be putting out two episodes a week with that like follow subscribe comment down below on what types of things you'd like to see whether you'd like to see more stuff with poker more stuff with van life more motorcycle things more stuff in the dallas area that i haven't i don't even know what's out here but it's a freaking massive metroplex and there's a lot of stuff out here bike king is out and we're back so everything is bigger in texas let's hope my win rate is as well and deuces